just to wait on you draw strength on you Lord rest in you Lord rest in you Thank you.
Greetings and welcome to Revive Nations TV. We're glad that you've chosen to join us this morning and that you have enjoyed worship and that you've given your all to the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. Would you just take a moment right now and click like on this video and share it with family and friends, with all of those that you know, so that they too may receive the voice of God for today. For those of you that are joining us and it's your first time, would you take a moment and click subscribe down below and right beside the subscribe button you'll see a bell icon if you click that icon you will be sure to receive new videos every single time they come out on this channel and don't forget revive nations kids comes out each week with a new episode to keep the children of god empowered and to keep them not only enthusiastic but to keep them flowing in the fire and in the water that we're receiving from God. People of God, I hope you're excited for what is about to come today. And before we get into that, we want to take a moment with great gratitude and celebration to give our tithes and our offerings unto the Lord. So we know that our tithes go to our local church, so make sure you are giving to your local church. For those of you that are from Montreal, from Emmanuel Church, you can give online to emmanuelmtl.com give, and you can do so right now. Those of you that are joining us from the international community around the world, our global Revive Nations family, you can give your offerings to revivenations.org slash give. And right now we're going to take a moment to give and we'll be right back with the Word of God.
Papa, can I ask you a question? Sure. Why does God have so many names? Hello, family. As you enjoy the Word of God, set up your children to watch this latest episode of Revive Nation's you Kids. You made me feel much, much better, and I want to say thank you. Find the link in the description below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Greetings and welcome back. I want to thank you for your giving to the kingdom. And now we know that we have come to that time when we get to hear the voice of God. People of God, I pray that you have taken the time this week and even up till this moment now to prepare yourselves to not just drink, but to pursue the source of the rivers of unending waters. This is why we are here, to pursue the lover of our soul, Jesus Christ, and people of God, would you please help me welcome and honor Prophet Shai Jumat. Thank you. Welcome to the children of God. It is such an honor to be able to come to you week after week with His Holy Scriptures. We thank God for that. We thank God for His grace. We thank God for His mercy. Um, God is drawn to a grateful people. So go ahead and, and um, in the comment section, let us know what you are most grateful to God for this week. Yes, in one line, let us know. Type something about what you are grateful to God. You know, when you are in person, pastors, you know, they can tell who is in the service, who didn't come. They may not meet you, greet you, but they can tell when you are absent. Now that we have switched to online, <laughs> the way you, your presence is known by is when you leave a comment. So, so I hope that you will not keep quiet. You will engage with us throughout the service and uh, let us know you are there. Yeah. It's always a joy to see your comment. It's always a joy. It's always a joy. Man of God, you're talking to us about engaging and I'm, I hear the word that you're bringing week after week after week. And the word that you bring itself is so engaging. It provokes us Thank you, Lord. to engage with the word. It's, it is so difficult to hear it and just walk away. It, it provokes you to pursue more. Wow, we, that's so we good to you. know. <laughs> so good to know. Um, we I take time to pray for that because you're not there in person. I feel like I haven't seen you for a decade. It feels long. I, I, I wish we can have a keyboard here. Mm. I miss my son playing for me live. Is it's different, but it has also helped us to reach out to the larger body of Christ through this technology. So we thank God that God is allowing us to do this. Man, God, in last week's word, you were talking about how the two disciples walked with Jesus. And the whole time Jesus was talking with them, they didn't realize who it was that was with them. And it was only after Jesus was gone away that they realized that they weren't just talking with somebody that was like them. And in that moment, you made reference to Judas, how it took for Judas to kiss Jesus in order for the Pharisees. But he didn't talk about the Pharisees, but how the Pharisees only realized who Jesus was because Judas had betrayed him with a kiss. And that's how they were able to show who it was, because at that point, they all looked alike. They couldn't identify Jesus from his own disciples because yeah. they looked alike. And when, and when Jesus was amongst the disciples, you said they enjoyed the revelations, they enjoyed the word that was being spoken to them, but yet they didn't realize the source of who it was that was with them. 
And it was only after he was gone that they realized they weren't just walking with another disciple or another man. They were encountering Jesus. And it was only when he was gone that they realized it. Mm. Isn't that the sad state of life where we are not sharp enough to value something when it is with us? We only value it, identify it and acknowledge it when it has left our lives. That is why they erect statues for dead people. Wow. Oh, wow. But while they are alive, they try to assassinate them. <laughs> Man of God, we, we pray that our eyes are open to see, to see. Thank you for the way you've been leading us, the way you've been bringing us to drink continuously at the river. And we're challenged to become carriers of this river, of rivers, <laughs> of prophet. We've been getting testimonies that have been coming in. You know, even last week you declared yes. At the end, you said yes. Testimony is going to be are going to be coming in, and they've been coming in this week. Thank God. People who have received the word, and people who have um, not just received the word, that, but they've been seeing the blessing of God in their life from the word that they've received. Mm, testimony is that. Thank you for sending them, because those are that's one of the ways of showing gratitude to God. Because you see, when the leper was lepers were healed, Jesus specifically told, "Go and show to the high priest." Yes, he was very specific. Um, oh. The times when he said, "Keep quiet," is because he didn't want his identity to be to be known ahead of time. My goodness, he wanted to stay hidden. And then, when one person came back with gratitude. You will see Jesus asking, "Where are the others?" Wow. Ten got healed, but only one came back, and he asked, "Where are the others?" Oh my goodness! Wow. The high priest were in charge of them spiritually, and it was required for the lepers in the Old Testament that, when they were healed, mm. that they would have to take it to the high priest. Anyways, <laughs> won't go there this morning. Wow. But let's hear. Let's. See. I always. You can maybe read one or two testimonies, and we will save time. But let's see what is the Lord doing. We can celebrate together. When you hear them having a testimony, when you celebrate it, that grace is released on your life. Amen. When you're jealous of somebody's blessing, that grace is leaving your life. But when you celebrate another man's accomplishment, you tap into the same grace. So when you see somebody having a job and you are jealous, that grace to receive a job is leaving you. When you see somebody having a child and you can't celebrate it, that grace for you is leaving you. Mm. When you see somebody having a car, you should be the one the most excited. So then you partake of their grace. Goodness. When you celebrate, the Bible says Mary greeted Elizabeth. Elizabeth greeted Mary. Immediately, the grace that was on Mary came upon Elizabeth to the point where the child in the womb kicked, leaped with joy, because her greeting, her excitement to see Mary, made her partake of the grace that Mary was carrying. So even while you're at home, you have to celebrate as if you are in the church. Uh, some of the testimonies are very long, because, <laughs> because of all that God is doing. You can summarize it. Right. You can summarize it. One of the testimonies came in. Um, the sister was talking about. Uh, she mentioned actually something that you talked about: how the systems of the world, how they benefit from the anointing on our lives. So the sister saying. In the message, Prophet Shaiju was talking about how these systems of the world can benefit from the anointing on a believer's life. And that's the reason why that system would even go on to be successful. I received that word. And last week, Wednesday, I went on to share a post on my Instagram. For some reason, I was struggling to post it. Now here she's talking about a post that 
that mom had posted. Okay. And mom had posted some very powerful, very deep words. And so many people were posting the same thing. They were copying and posting it and celebrating the word. And she's saying, she had difficulty because she's saying so many people were already posting it. You know, is there really a need for her to post it? Okay. And she said, no. She goes, I have to post it. And so she went and she posted mom's spirit-filled post. And she said, the next day I got to work and my boss who follows me on Instagram said to me, with so much honor and respect, I realize from your Instagram post that you are a holy person. I smiled and said, well, I'm a believer of Christ. He started opening up to me about how he knows that in order to succeed in his business, he needs to involve God in it. Wow. Then he went on to ask me to be the company's spiritual guide and counselor. Wow. And how he would like to allocate time where I would just talk to them about God and pray. Now I was hearing all of this and thinking, wow, what is happening? Then it was almost as though I could hear the prophet's words so loud and clear in my spirit, bringing such a calming comfort, saying that the people all around us will be saved when they come in contact with us because we believe, sorry, but because we may be the only light they get to see, especially in this midnight hour. I know that all of this has been activated by the transformative word we receive biweekly and the diligence in sharing it. Mm, that's, wow. the, that's the important part. Yes. We thank God for that. As you're reading us, reminded of the life of Daniel, mm. where the unbeliever king paid him more to promote him, gifted him with gold, blessed him, took care of him gave them the protection needed so that he can function in the gift that he received from God. My goodness. Somehow unbelievers value that gift more than believers. So thank God that's, that's something we need to learn from, that unbelievers can recognize and acknowledge and value something that believers criticize and attack. Wow. So we, we want to thank God for that uh, Boss, let that company be blessed mm. and yeah. many more people. Let, let the eyes of your boss be open to see the light you carry. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's just have maybe one more. This next testimony, Prophet, is uh, from a sister. And in it, she's, she shared many things that are very, uh, very sensitive and very private information. Um, but in the heart of it, she wrote this. Dad, with great respect, humility, and courage, I approach you to ask that you and mom please speak over my life. Remember me, my father, as your daughter, who has no earthly parents or a saved spouse and cruel in-laws. I'm tired of battling this, Dad. So one week prior to receiving the testimony, she messaged us asking for this prayer. And a week later, she wrote back, with a testimony. Okay. And if you allow me just to connect the two, she writes, Greetings to my RN family. I had a dream about Prophet Shaiju. In this dream, she had a very deep encounter, Prophet. And, and she's saying, In the dream, you came to her and she couldn't see what it was, but you began to pull something out of her. And she was saying she was able to see that it was so heavy and it came out and you did it three times, pulling it out of her. And that even in her sleep, she felt something really heavy come out. And she said she was able to see things differently and she was able to see more clearly. Wow, deliverance happening. Amen. We preached that last week that the word will bring deliverance. Yes. Captivity can be broken. Amen. Wow. Wow, even this morning, child of God, get ready. According to your faith, if you notice, both of them, what they did is they put the word into action. 
it's not about this. did the man of god pray for me did he lay hands on me did he no 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 the word you have to make it yours Amen. you have to lay claim on the word the word is from the spirit to your spirit now depending on that faith that you put and claim something oh just to remind you of what i said last week the word that was preached was setting captives free yes so even this week i believe that the word is going to do a mighty work of setting you free in the area that you need breakthrough amen that's what is happening amen i have been seeking the lord for specific things for those that have been watching us and i know that there are special gifts coming to you this morning amen okay i won't go into details of what it is but those that put their eyes on the lord this morning you will be rewarded amen so we have been talking about being rooted it has been our thing being rooted in god being rooted obviously we are talking about being rooted in christ that is where our theme is mm-hmm. being rooted in christ that is the simple or surface level explanation of what we are aiming for but by now you have also realized that when you say god when you say christ there's so many dimensions to christ there's so many sides to christ so many facets so when you're talking about rooted in christ what area are you talking about mm. has many areas covered but that is why i said maybe a week or two weeks ago depending on what your revelation is that side of god is made manifest oh, yes do you remember that yes i said about jehovah jire jehovah rafa which side of god have you encountered with so the teachings that come to you is aimed at trying to expose your eyes to the dimensions that you would have otherwise not noticed to pay attention to dimensions that exist today that can bless you in the spirit and i know that spiritually you're growing i know that your hunger is growing i know your thirst is growing i know that that it is happening and we want to go more deeper amen so we want to really use a microscope and study what does that mean rooted in christ mm. we want to know more we just don't want to be christians that speak christianese yes. we don't want to be christians that throw terms around that looks very spiritual all oh, be a rooted christian what does that mean mm-hmm. yes obviously the right off that sentence you come to have an understanding that being a rooted christian means that you are so in christ that you are not moved away from christ because of a storm amen yeah yes. because yes. of for whether i have a job or not mm-hmm. i am a rooted christian amen yeah. yes because some people go to church only to get a job mm-hmm. some people go to church to get married some people get, they want something if they don't get it then they would be so discouraged to worship god 
then they prefer maybe i should stay back at home and not go to church because i prayed i did i gave offering i gave my tithes but i really thought that this year i would get married but there was one good looking guy but he didn't want me or whatever reasons and now you allow that discouragement to eat you up you feel depressed you feel sad and now satan uses that and slowly takes you away from the lord away from the house that he is planted you and he takes you away into the world now you start allowing sin into your life you start doing things that you had stopped doing mm-hmm. so that we know that's the simple understanding of being a rooted christian but but if you wanted a simple understanding you wouldn't probably be on this channel that's not what you're here for you you are looking for more yes. you are here because there is soft meat and there is hard meat you are here because you have developed your taste palate to taste more uh and you are interested in the god of the details yes the fact that god created life in so much detail that the body has its own systems and structures the body he created has bones and nerves that's what up around then made all things perfectly fit with muscles that cover it uh, with skin to cover it and the skin made out of millions of cells mm. and and within the cells and how those cells multiply how the cells replenish here this is the god we serve so to have a simple understanding is not enough and the lord that we serve he is willing to pour more to people that are thirsty so that's where we are headed to to understand how do we get more mm-hmm. how do we understand more of god and we can trace that back to what we have been studying the thirst yes that causes god to pour out himself Amen. okay isaiah chapter 44 again verse 3 let's eat and feast from the lord in isaiah chapter 44 verse 3 for i will pour water upon him that is thirsty i will pour water upon him that is thirsty i will pour water upon him that is thirsty i will pour water upon him that is thirsty the god that we serve is a faithful god he is a covenant keeping god he is not a man to lie so if this god that we serve is faithful then what god wants from us is that he is waiting for an appropriate response from us that will cause him to show off his glory to us so then we can conclude without a shadow of doubt that if we have not seen god's glory manifest it is never because he has forgotten his promise mm. but it is because our thirst that we think is a thirst is not the kind of thirst that god has to hold himself accountable to because when he says i will pour water on the sticker and you don't see water on the sticker is it because god has changed his mind 
Is it because God is not keeping his promise? Absolutely not because he is the same yesterday, today and forever. But then what is missing is our thirst. And yet many times when I go we can be in a church and we believe that we are really thirsty. And yet that which we think is thirst is not thirsty enough to draw the attention of God into our lives. So then we have to measure our thirst. Yes. Yes. Please be with me with all your heart this morning do not be distracted. You have to measure and see what is it that you think is an appropriate thirst. Mm-hmm. Is that something God sees as the right thirst that will now cause his hand to move on your behalf? Well, please, you have to help us in this area. Mm. You have to help us in this area. We we can't miss this. That is why, child of God, many times we call ourselves as believers, but we fail to draw the attention of God. We fail to draw the attention of God. I hope I have your attention. So I'm going to say something very critical. It is not enough that you are drawn to the oil. It is as critical that now that oil is now attracted to you. Many people feel that they are thirsty enough for that anointing. but have you now come to a place where the oil looks at you and said he is the right person and now the oil can jump on you the first son came all ready up sanctified in fact they they offered sacrifices before coming before samuel so they prepared themselves for the oil that they knew was waiting because Samuel came into the house and said sanctify yourself so they all did the the list of what needs to be done to prepare for that oil and they came the first son came ready the oil was not attracted to him the second came the oil said Mm-mm, not moving the third one came and the oil refused to leave the flask <laughs> So it is not enough that you are attracted to the oil now the oil has to also be attracted to you is your head ready for that oil preparing your lives where the grace mercy and favor of god is now attracted to you now yes. you are attracting that grace now you are there there are some things that you can do in your spirit that can cause that anointing to come searching for you where prophet samuel now is saying we refuse to sit until you bring this young man from the forest we refuse the oil is now waiting for the young man the oil is waiting for a generation I want you to hear me out child of God there is an oil that is waiting for you today there is a call of God that is waiting for a generation today it's waiting it's waiting but the oil will not come to where you are you have to come to where the oil is ay 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 so you see in this in this season where God is looking for a generation that is already living a lifestyle of sanctification because all these brothers of david they all consecrated themselves because they heard about the oil but david didn't have time to consecrate himself because he was already living a consecrated life 
So he could come into the room and immediately the grace of God that is on, Samuel causes him to jump up and say, yes, this is the one. Anoint him for me. The oil saw that he was already living a lifestyle of consecration. No man of God, there is a place where many will misunderstand you, but there is a place where the oil understands you. There is a language of the oil. There is a culture of the oil. There is an atmosphere of the oil. Every other place you will be misunderstood. But the oil understands you perfectly because you were made for that oil and the oil was made for you. And that moment comes where heaven looks at you and say that, please, I want you to understand this man of God. The oil means to consecrate someone, to set apart someone, okay? Let me go a little slow. When an oil comes on somebody, that is to tell that now this person is set apart for an assignment. But the fact is that it was not the oil that caused him to set apart, but it is the fact that he was set apart that caused him to be set apart. Wow. I I don't know if you you got that, people of God. Let me try to say that one more time. It is a fact that he was already set apart that caused the oil to cause to come upon him. So now that he can be further set apart. But in order for him to be set apart, he had to already be set apart. And these are the formulas of attracting the oil. You can study throughout the scriptures. This is something that you cannot argue. When it comes to the oil, the oil is very special. It's very special. And that's what makes it special. What makes it special is that this oil is not found on everybody. So because it is not found on everybody, you cannot be like everybody. And that is why now the oil is able to look at your lifestyle and say, hey, this is the one that I was made for. This is the consecrated one. This is the set apart one. This is the misunderstood one. This is the one that is the crazy one. This is the one that does things very differently. The way she worships is different. The way she prays is different. The way she gives is different. This is the mad one. This is the one that people don't understand, but the oil understands. The oil understand because it was made for somebody as set apart. And what it looks like misunderstanding to many. Oil says, no, 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 I was tailor-made for this character. So you will look one by one, those that the oil falls upon. They were all misunderstood. They were all living on top of the mountain, living a life where their own disciples wouldn't understand, their own servants wouldn't understand. That is what causes the oil to function on you. The the part of you that which is most misunderstood is the part has qualified you to be understood by the oil. Let's take that in. Let's take that in. So some of you want to run away from certain trials. Some of you don't understand why the enemy has attacked you from when you were a young child. Some of you don't understand why you had to go through certain things. 
it looks like your friends are all happy but you you had a different life child of god the lord has been qualifying you to be qualified for that oil that has been set apart for you right from your mother's womb god told jeremiah i've, I've seen you from your mother's womb from the time you have been conceived in your mother's womb that oil has been waiting to land upon you that oil comes upon thirsty ground thirsty ground i want you to take a moment and study yourself and say how thirsty am i for the things of god how desperate am i for the things of god the level of your desperation can be measured by the price you're willing to pay so if you are desperate and hungry for a move of god you are thirsty for the waters if you are drawn to that oil what price are you willing to pay to prove that desperation if you talk to david he has all my life i've been misunderstood by my own brothers they make fun of me every single time so but i have found my joy in worshiping the lord i have found The glory of God is so heavy this morning. I see a beautiful vision. In fact, I see another one. When I go I see the heels of a shoe. I see a shoemaker. The back side of the shoes, the heels. I see him marking. I see a leather material taken cut out clean and i see markings where the stitching goes and i hear the lord say this morning through this video he is making a brand new shoes for somebody yes 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 i feel the joy of the lord filling this video yes and the joy is filling in your home right now i assure you i guarantee you this video is releasing a glory of god into your house there is great joy coming to you knowing that that season of you being misunderstood that season of you being isolated that season where you didn't know what was the value of your life what was the purpose of your life it's coming to an end because the lord is tailor making an oil that will locate you in the days to come oh matara se kem brokoli anta me bron de le brosi ante rekesia child of god receive it receive it receive it i see a mighty wind coming into somebody's house right now some people are being filled with the holy spirit right now begin to speak in tongues let the spirit of god take over you jump dance worship the lord with all your might take it drink from the rivers of the holy spirit drink from the rivers of the holy spirit receive it receive it receive it receive it let go hallelujah ah hallelujah 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 yes Yes Lord. Jesus. Somebody thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him, thank him, thank him. The Lord Jesus looked at the disciples and he said this boat. That boat that was at the waters not being used, empty. The Lord Jesus would come and say let's take the boat to the waters. Let's check it out. There are some people that have been feeling worthless without purpose. But I want you to know the Lord is preparing you 
there is a reason why god does not move with you simply desiring him for him to move he wants you to your thirst to increase to the point where now it is evident that you're willing to pay a price for that and now when the price is seen now it it's up to you what that price is sometimes the price is that you are watching these videos and you are praying and you're crying to god and saying god let this all you look at me for somebody else it is probably spending hours and hours of worship for somebody else it may be building altars on altars for whatever is your revelation of paying a price when you pay that price i'm just reminded of my childhood man of god when i was a little boy my church my pastor he was man of vision he would invite a lot of mighty men of god i from from the time that i can remember i can give you names after names of very powerfully used men of god that he would bring some of them would come all the way from america those days i'm talking about two decades ago of men of god that was being mightily used and they would he would at least once a month we would have a special guest and he would bring one after that prophet this man of god is every man of god would have a different kind of a ministry different gift different grace we would have three days fasting we would have 21 days fasting the church would be packed thousands of people would just stay in the church some people would just days it was it was a heavenly feast and i remember 20 to 30 minutes into the service all my friends would start poking each other so let's get out let's get out let's get out all our children you got to understand oh, we like 50 100 kids those days uh, thousands of people and one after other <laughs> they would slip out of the service well my mother would stare me down from the back she would tear me down my god i don't think she was worshiping those days i think her duty was to just watch me that's what she did she would stare oh, man i still remember her stares <laughs> she her her eyes could talk she would basically say i don't care if there's no none of you so within 20 half an hour all my friends have disappeared i'm the only kid now in the service and she would encourage me she would say you got to stay closest to the platform sitting in the back was not an option she would say i need you to be in the front because her thing was the anointed man of god is on the platform you have to be the closest to the platform that was a revelation and she released that information to me and she would she would look at me and say you, you, your eyes were not closed you were not on your knees you were in praying she would tell me she said look and do you see this man's anointing do you see this man's calling you have to pray that god uses you that way she would say cry out to pray that was one thing she kept teaching me she said shall you cry out to the lord cry out to the lord that god will use you cry out to the lord <sighs> every service every service it now became part of me to thirst after the lord So in my school they would ask what do you want to be when you grow up So my friends would say I want to be a doctor somebody wants to be a pilot astronaut a scientist they would come to me what do you want to be so I want to be a man of god when I grow up I want to be a prophet when I grow up I want to serve the lord when I grow up and they would all laugh because they were like they, they really they really i was bullied a lot growing up i remember the entire class chasing me after school every week i would be so scared 
when the bell rang i would run get my cycle and try to cycle as fast as i can to get home because none of my my friends thought i was crazy because they all playing cricket i wouldn't be there i would find a tree to go sit under and just close my eyes and say lord jesus i love you so much i remember the days when i would tell people i would tell the lord look i have no friends all i have is you lord thirst i've shared this before there was one girl in the class she was a first in everything man i remember her every class she was the first she would like she was so focused in education and i remember like you know the 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 elite students right they wouldn't even talk to us kids because they were the 99.9 category yeah all her classes first first she was, i've never i don't remember she getting a second class she was the first rank in the entire about a few years ago i got a message in my inbox say hey are you the shayu from this school i said yes i i immediately recognized that name because it's a name that that people would would wish that their life was as sharp as this I said yeah but i want you to pray i said you want me to pray I said okay what what do you want me to pray for and she was talking about how she doesn't have a job wow and i thought to myself she was an engineer now mm. all that focus in life yet now yeah she was decades later coming to me yeah <laughs> asking for a blessing that can so there is one such grace from god that causes you to bless even those that the world thinks is more qualified my goodness there is one such blessing that is more richer than the rich people out there yeah. there is one such blessing that they have to now come to you because you have something that they don't have thirsting after mm. the righteousness yeah. thirsting after god focused so much as a god i need this i am driven i need this more than anything else in my life i need i don't want to be another ordinary church member yeah. if god brought you into this stream into this connected you to this ministry and if you're watching this video child of god i assure you it is not by accident as i was saying that i saw a vision of the lord jesus preparing a ring to give to some people i see a diamond ring being prepared to be given to some people that are hungry and thirsty i believe that that ring is representing Yes a grace that is coming into your life to serve him but i want you to now begin to start weighing your thirst weighing your thirst and say what other things do i thirst more than how much i thirst for the lord yes. you need to weigh it child of god the kingdom is of scales mm. you have to bring it on a scale and you have to say weigh it now I've spent so much time with this individual. How much time I have spent with the Lord. I have spent so much time with this game. How much time have I been with the Lord? My level of excitement was so much for this action. How much excitement did I have to be with the Lord? You got to weigh your thirst. I was ready to spend so much money to do this activity to get this activity but how much excited was I to give to the Lord oh I I I pray that this week you will begin to measure your thirst and say have I thirst after the Lord is there anything else that I am thirsty after that is disqualifying me from 
thirsting after the Lord. Is there anything that I am thirsting after that is adulterated? Is there anything that I'm thirsting after which is contaminated? Is there anything that I'm thirsting after that my eyes are thirsting after that my heart is thirsting after that is not pleasing the Lord? I want you to bring it to the Lord today. The glory of God is all over this video. The glory of God is knocking on your heart right now. The glory of God is making you into a better believer that is going to be rooted and that is not going to be something that is going to naturally happen that is going to happen because you are intentional about being thirsty about the things of God you are in a workplace and you are intentional to keep your eyes on the Lord you are with your friends and you are intentional to make sure that even when you are with them you are with the lord Amen. you are watching a movie but you are intentional that your heart is guarded even as you are enjoying that movie you are making sure that you are enjoying the lord Amen. that there is nothing that you will thirst more that there is nothing that you are unable to walk away from that there is nothing more than your thirst than the thirst after the righteousness of the lord so back to where i started what are you rooted in because to say i'm rooted in christ is a general statement and i said about how we need to now use the microscope to look deeper and say what exactly in christ am i rooted So the general answer that you would probably hear is you know we have to be rooted in the word of God we have to be rooted in prayer okay the word of God is our foundation and prayer is the place of our communication that is a process to get somewhere what is the word leading to what is the prayer leading us to because those are vehicles that is taking us somewhere right so to be saying i'm rooted in prayer you should say i'm rooted in my communication okay so that is a journey to somewhere so where is it supposed to take us what is it that we are really aiming for with our time of prayer with our time in the word of god so like i said it would not be fair for somebody to say there's only so many points that you are rooted in depending on which man of god you speak to depending on their revelation depending on which bible college they studied it all will change but again you are not there now you are here yes so 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 the lord wants you to hear this today and uh, i hope that it would it would bless you as much as it blesses me if you were to ask me and say if there is something that you want to be rooted in okay I'm just about to share something that will take hours and hours of hours of understanding but I'm leaving it to you okay if you ask me and say if there's just something that you want to be rooted in what would that few things be I'd probably be able to trace it to just two things okay that is me maybe you have a lot more we thank God for that but if you were to say i only have two options and i would say these are the two things that i want to be most rooted in number 1 i want to be rooted in the presence of god yes i understand the knowledge of christ but i want the presence of god i want to be a believer that is rooted 
in the presence of God. Because there are believers that are not in the presence of God. And they are still believers. They are still going to heaven. They still believe in Jesus. But they don't necessarily have access to his nearness. Okay, we, we'll talk about it in a little more detail. I don't know how much I'm able to cover today. But we'll be here. Okay. The second area that you need to be rooted in is in the voice of God. Mm. Okay? And I'm clear what I'm saying. I didn't say just, it would have been easy to say be rooted in the Bible. But then the same Bible is talking about how when the eunuch was reading the Bible, the Holy Spirit sent Philip to him saying, go and explain that Bible to him. So the eunuch was rooted in the scripture. But he says, unless someone explains it to me, how will I get it? So that is why I carefully choose my words. Root, to be rooted in the voice of God. Meaning I can read the text of this word. Or I can find the author of this word. We will touch that. Uh, uh, like I said, this is this is opened something that because when I'm sh sharing the voice is so extensive. You have to know where you can hear his voice, what place you can. Sometimes you hear voice in different locations. So fi finding that location, hey, we we get into all of that, God willing. Okay. Uh, but for now, man of God, go to Exodus chapter 33, please. Exodus 33. I'm going to show you something. Verse 1, 2 and 3. Exodus 33, 1, 2 and 3. I have it here, prophet, in Exodus chapter 33, starting in verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart, and go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed I will give it. And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. For I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Oh Lord, oh Lord. This is a, a scary verse. And this will explain what I shared with you, man of God. This is why I say, when you say, be rooted in Christ, rooted in Christ, that's a generic term. Mm. We need to really when you start really looking at deeper things, there are some scary differences, subtle differences, details, details in the kingdom of God. If God puts so much detail into a skin, into a cell, mm. and a, there's a program on his own in, in that, that point there. Now, how much more should we as believers start learning the little details of God? Mm. That is the difference between knowing God and understanding God. Wow. Okay. So believers, many times we just know God. But when you want to understand God, you start seeing the small details. Small details that you can be known as a Christian, but there are small details that would make you on a completely different plateau. Mm, wow. That details is what we need to pay attention. That is why you are here. Yes. That yes. detail. Because if it's just generic information, you didn't need to be here. Anyways. So, there is a point where the Lord says, I will put your name in the book. This is an agreement God is having with Moses. Saying, I, I, I'll put your name in the book. 
But Moses says, no, that's not enough. That's not enough. This is a conversation. There's a reasoning happening with God and him. And he's saying, you know, I'll delete all these guys. I'll put your name in the book. And Moses is saying, no, that is not enough. So there is a place where you can reason with God of what is enough and what is not enough. But it's up to you. It is up to your thirst, to your level of how much more you want from God. Okay. So a believer that does not understand this can just live an ordinary Christian life and think it's good because their name is in the book. Wherein there is more. Okay. So now you see those, the statement that the Lord is making. God is saying, depart from here. Where is here? Where is depart from here mean? Mm. He's saying, depart from my presence. Wow. Depart from here. Wow. That location is not is not a geographic location. He's saying, depart from my nearness. Depart from being next to me. Depart from hearing my voice. Yes. Okay. He's saying, leave from here. And then he's not saying, leave from here, I'm sending you to hell. In fact, he's going on to offer them yes. an angel yes. from his presence. Yes. Go ahead. In verse 2. And I will send an angel before thee. Yes, 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 yes. He's saying that I will still send an angel that will go before you. Now, man of God, if you remember what I shared last week of hearing the words and then going to the source. Yes. Okay. So he's saying that now I'm even going to send you an angel. I'm telling you, man of God, many people would have been so excited saying, okay, I get an angel, really? You, you're serious? This is, this is a good deal. We get an angel of our own. But Moses didn't just know God. He understood God. May I, may I uh, share this little detail with humility? I don't mean to hurt anybody. But I need to bring this understanding. There was a whole season where the body of Christ was super fixated about the angelic realm. Oh, the angel that, angel here, I see angel there, I see angel this. Uh, the only problem with that is that don't let the scale tip over to the place where you're so fascinated by the angel that you are not as fascinated by the person who sent that angel. Amen, okay. yes. So, I believe that season was needed in the body of Christ. So that's why I say I have to say it carefully because I'm not against it. That season was needed for our eyes and understanding to open up to a realm that was so common in the New Testament times. It was so common that men of God, when the angel appeared to Mary, you can see the way she's reacting to him is, is very, is not moved by the fact she because her eyes was on Jesus yes. when those angels appeared and brought Peter out you don't see Peter standing and saying hello sir can I have an autograph no. he wakes up from the sleep sees an angel just follows him as if this was a common occurrence mm. may the angelic realm be a common occurrence Amen. yes Amen. yes because there is something else that caught their fascination there's something else that they are thirsty for something greater, the yes. source, not just listening to the words, but they are going to go searching for the source of those words. Yes. Okay. So the Lord is coming to uh, uh, an agreement with them. He's trying to make an agreement with them saying, listen, I will send you an angel. In fact, this angel is not going to sulk and be upset. He's in fact going to fight for you guys. And that is why I'm saying, when you say you are a rooted Christian, what does that even mean? Does it mean that you, you don't miss church? Does that mean that you have never missed giving your tithes? Does that mean that you, when you worship, you are the loudest in the room? Those are surface things. What we as children of God need to do is we need to study this and say, Hey, Lord, I just don't want to be 
just a believer that is rooted by namesake and just know God. But I want to be a believer that understands the heart of God. Yes. Yes. I want to be that believer that that knows the what makes daddy happy. Amen. I want to know what makes my Lord Jesus happy. Yes. yes. I want to know what will make him look down and say, "Well done, my faithful servant." It is that details that will set you apart. So, he's saying that I'm going to send you an angel. Yes. So the angel is going to now continue to help you. So there is still going to be victories. Mm-hmm. But without the presence there is still going to be a blessing you're going to go into your promised land but blessing without his presence and he's saying depart from here and the angel will talk to you you don't need to be in my presence so the voice the spoken word is going to be missing but you guys are still going to be my people you still be faithful christians everything is moving on you're still having a breakthroughs you're still having blessings man of god if i can say this this is probably the biggest trap in which many believers have caught themselves oh if i can say this is the reason why many of them will drink from the water and never carry the rivers man of god if, if i may may I ask you a question please so god is telling moses i'm going to give you the angel and He's going to lead you into the land and he's going to give you the blessing and all that. But without my presence and without my voice. Is that a is that a test to see if we want more? What if I say that this is something that we are offered every day? Oh. Well, this is the options on the table. And this is why we don't have revival because somehow consciously or subconsciously we have chosen just breakthroughs we have chosen just blessings we are fascinated by these gifts and it happens every day it's happening right now even as this word is coming to you okay these things are now offered to you on your plate it is a choice that you make in this very word this one hour that you you are you are tuning in there is victories in that word in this small clip there is presence there is glory his voice and there is breakthroughs many times we we focus so much on that one area you know and then we miss the other i pray that your spirit comes to that deep place of rest where you can now see what is offered to you as a child of god that you're able to say lord I want to go deeper this year. You know what is coming to you right now is very precious. Is very precious. Because I believe that God is using this video to raise a unique brand a unique breed of those who delight in him they will be able to sift through all the attractions and all the distractions you see this both the attractions of miracles breakthroughs signs wonders and there's distractions that the enemy brings they are able to sift through both and then just come to that deep place 
and say, I thirst after that. I want to be that one in the twelve, the beloved of the Lord. Yes, there are many faithful disciples. Yet I want to be the beloved disciple. And your thirst will define that. You are the product of your thirst. <laughs> now it makes sense what I said last week. Yes. We, f- we finished today. Oh. Show me what your thirst is. I'll tell you who you are in the spirit realm. Many in the spirit realm are known for their battles. Many others are known for their gifts. But some are known for their access they have to the heart of God. Let us become that generation. Let your thirst be sanctified. Let your thirst be clear. Let that which you thirst be purified. Let that which you thirst. The glory of God is all over your body. Let it increase. Let it multiply. This week, may you enjoy His nearness. Man, I was just holding this Bible like this to myself. And I was just reminded of when I was six, seven years old, I had a huge Dick's Bible. Large, probably very heavy for me to carry those days. I would, we had one bedroom, we didn't have a lot those days. And I would uh, slowly wait for my parents to go to sleep. And I would drag myself out to the living room. I would hug that Bible. I would weep before the Lord. Just weep. Say, Lord, I need you. Hugging that big takes Bible. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I I thirst after you. May you become a different kind of a believer. Amen. May you become the kind of a believer that God looks and says, this one, this one is different. I love him. I love him. I would sit in the classroom and I wanted to make sure my thirst was on point. And there's too many distractions these days. So I would write on my hand, pray. So every time I was looking up, I was listening to the teacher. She would write, give me notes. I would look down to write the notes. I would see, pray. I would begin to pray. Because there's too many distractions around us. So I had to train my flesh to desire the right things, mm. to test after the right thing. It has to be trained. As long as you are in the flesh, your flesh does not automatically want to desire the right things. Yes. So you have to train your flesh in whatever ways to go the way you want. So this is Probably the big mistake many people make. They're just saying, I, I want to be thirsty for the Lord. They're thinking that it will come to them. No, you go to it. Yes. They're thinking, if I can just get a man of God to just pray and I fall on the floor, roll on the floor three times, I might get more thirsty for the Lord. No. It is a choice we make to ignore that those things that are around. And you thirst after that which is superior. Yes. Thirst after that which is greater. Every time you see a post coming to you, you see a video coming to you, you see it's a choice. 
you choose what are you going to thirst after it's a choice so child of god this week your thirst is going to cause god to pour out the water amen okay one more time if you can read isaiah 44 verse 3 i want to pray with you for i will pour water upon him that is thirsty ah the water is coming on you now that you figure out what to be thirsty about that water is coming to you that sweet water of the spirit is coming to you okay go on and floods upon the dry ground floods those people that are thirsty is just not just water floods are coming that's revival man that's revival so the first water comes in fills your spirit and then the second flood comes and it fills people around you <laughs> that's revival the fire is ignited inside you and then it ignites people around you your family your husband your wife your children but if you are not catching that fire they cannot catch the fire today i want you to be focused be focused go with the strength the mighty weight of god is on you maintain it sustain it carry it until we meet again shalom Oh, oh.